like to introduce our next speaker, architect G. Jodhira. He is an accredited professional in green and sustainability environment, certified by IGBC Lead India, Greha Evaluator, Member of Council of Architecture India. He has completed his Bachelor in Architecture from SAP and University in 1996, European Studies and Research, Genova from Italy, 1997, Masters in Architectural Design from Clemson University, USA, 1998. Let us now proceed to Architect Jodhiram's presentation. My name is uh, Jyoti Ram. Uh, I'm an uh, architect graduated from School of Architecture and Planning and University in uh, 1996. And um, um, I did my master's uh, from Clemson University, USA. Then I worked uh, for some uh, brief period in uh, Atlanta. Then I came back to uh, Chennai and uh, started associated with this company uh, C.R. Narayan Rao Associates uh, for almost uh, uh, 17 to 18 years. And uh, I've been uh, also visiting faculty to various colleges and I've done uh, various type of projects from small scale projects to large scale projects, including campus design, master planning, and uh, 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 complete uh, fit out of the buildings. Um, so, um, uh, I have a wide uh, uh, experience in terms of uh, handling the clients from government side and also from uh, private corporates. So, we could see there's a, a way big difference in the way people, they expect uh, architects to respond to uh, in terms of time, design, and also the quality of the product and also the materials and the knowledge of all the guidelines and uh, uh, um, uh, stipulations uh, followed in the local uh, local uh, uh, regulations. And with the SRM University, I've been associated with the SRM University for almost uh, 18 years now. And I've been visiting the faculty. I've also been going as an uh, external uh, thesis uh, review examiner. So, um, and I know SRM has been putting a, in a phenomenal effort to uh, bring in a lot of uh, various uh, lecturers and uh, speakers so that the students can benefit from their uh, speeches and lectures and from their uh, wisdom. And uh, they have also conducted a lot of uh, conventions uh, like NASA, ZONASA, and I've also been to a couple of them as a jury member, and I know the amount of enthusiasm the college has uh, in terms of uh, giving their students the best uh, what they can uh, give in the uh, current scenario by bringing in, by bringing even the uh, uh, all the architects and engineers from all around the India. Now this convention, and I think it's uh, one of its, its uh, first kind, and I'm very happy that uh, SRM management has been uh, making a great effort to uh, make this happen, and uh, I'm strongly believe this is a very great. Uh, um, uh, event uh, being organized by SRM, which will uh, benefit not only the uh, SRM students, and I also feel this will have a uh, good impact for all the people who are participating in this convention, and uh, they'll be able to take good memories and also um, amount of knowledge from this uh, uh, presentations. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, process involved in designs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my talk, like, you know, the, the clients varies for various projects. And I normally say that design is not designed by the architect, it's mostly by the clients. And especially in the contemporary scenario and the corporate sectors on board, uh, there uh, seems to be a dynamic change in terms of expectation in the design uh, from the client side. 
especially uh, uh, when there is a huge competition and also the very uh, very thin timeline available for them. Um, so they expect the architects to rise up to their level and then uh, uh, deliver the uh, needs as quickly as uh, possible. So hence, uh, I'm going to talk about how we uh, were generating designs, uh, you know, one like at the conceptual stage and also uh, how we were using softwares to analyze the design after the building design has been frozen so that, you know, we are also st technically strong and then uh, uh, justified in what we are proposing to the clients. So I'm going to share the... Uh... So the process... Uh, for design and analysis, what we um, normally use in the offices is uh, predominantly uh, sketching, which is a very conventional type of uh, method, but uh, we found that that comes in handy and um, it helps in um, um, uh, you know, quickly d deliver uh, the client needs. See, as you are aware, these are the five uh, basic stages of uh, designing. So we have a pre-design wherein we collect data uh, in terms of like site and also the contextual uh, parameters. Then we move on to the schematic, then of course the design development, that's when our services and uh, all the other uh, technical aspects will start uh, coming in. And once that is frozen, we'll move on to the construction documentation where we'll have the construction drawings as well as the specifications uh, part. Then we'll move on to the construction administration. Now, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, our, our practice uh, focuses on the, these three stages because uh, nowadays for the uh, fifth stage, we have uh, uh, PMCs uh, doing their role. So I'm going to talk about, you know, how the design, you know, initially, in the initial phases, there will not be much clarity at all. The project you know, is similar to what happens in the colleges. But once the project is introduced, we have so much of thoughts um, coming to the mind and we do research and we get a lot of ideas and uh, innovative uh, things to be incorporated, <clears throat> then you have to move on to a conceptual stage quickly so that, you know, uh, the, when the client asks for a meeting, we'll be able to give a, a solid design. So, uh, of course, uh, in the, the software which are available today in the market, for every stage, we do have a few of these softwares. Uh, right for the uh, ideas, initially we do have SketchUps and for walkthroughs we have a uh, few of the softwares available and presentation like what we are using right now, PowerPoint and for design development we have RTCAD, MicroStation. And uh, for building performance we do have Ecotech, Energy Plus, Design Builder, Odeon. Of course these are all uh, uh, the softwares which um, uh, require uh, uh, no, a design, a completed design to some extent where we are moved on to a design development stage. So we'll apply this and then see where we stand. And then, you know, if you are meeting the standard, we continue or we have to revise the design and then uh, rerun this. So we'll talk about more on uh, the conceptual and building performance part of it. So this is a big question asked, do I really need an architect to draw plans? I know if you, today, if you see the amount of softwares available in the market, and also the um, uh, um, the knowledge, wisdom uh, uh, existing in the web uh, world. Uh, ideally, it says this in all the situation you could get by without an architect. So what, where do we stand then? You know, as architect, the job of architect today is to create beautiful buildings. That's all. That's what Philip Johnson says. So where this beautiful comes into the picture, and then that's when that uh, the communication comes into the uh, play how we will communicate our language or our design ideas to a client. So always an architect has to communicate his ideas in absolute form to create uniqueness. Because what Nasha says is the biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So we have to make sure that whatever we wanted to communicate, have we communicated exactly the way we want it. So that's when Lake Obuser comes in and says, I prefer drawing to talking. Drawing is faster and leaves less room for lies. And we also understood that is the most uh, 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 true thing even in the um, current scenario is even if we have so much of technology and also the advancement in all the tools and equipments, drawings are the first things, you know, which will be able to uh, explain to, our, uh, to the clients our ideas in a much more clear way. 
So these are a few sketches which you, I'm trying to show you how those initial sketches were before the building has been built. And you know you could see the uh, similarities between how it was uh, uh, done during the design stages and how it has uh, developed or evolved at the later stages. And uh, similarly, this uh, National Assembly building in Dhaka by Louis Icon, you can see the, even in the initial rendering, you wanted to have the water body there and um, as to you might have some uh, brush watercolor strokes there. And even in reality, you know, that has been almost um, captured the way he has perceived. And the same thing is for our, our uh, Charles Korea's uh, works for Bharat Bhavan and uh, Mr. Balakrishna Doshi's work at Sangat and um, uh, Sanjay Puri's work at, for Bombay Art Society. So you can still see, you know, especially project like this, wherein you have a, a little complicated and asymmetrical elevations, you do need uh, these kind of initial sketches to communicate the ideas. So uh, I'm going to talk about how the sketches, how to make them to reality, how quickly we make them and uh, take it forward. So it can be used at the master plan level itself. So first thing we do is get the um, site contour drawing from the client. We have made sure that that had been surveyed recently uh, so that you know, the contours and the profile and the uh, boundaries are all marked at site and then surveyed. So when we brought, we bring that and then we overlay that with the, even as a software or we even manually we can overlay with the transparency sheets and then we do a quick uh, layout of uh, mass planning. The, the advantage of doing that is, you know, the major zoning and uh, uh, road networking and traffic, those kind of uh, uh, aspects can be very well captured in the designing stage itself as a part of the sketches. So this is uh, one of the example where the, the site had phenomenal uh, contours. So it would not have been easier uh, if there was, uh, uh, we have to do the similar thing in the computer directly. So what we did, we took the contours as it is, whatever the way it is, and then we made the building flow as part of the uh, contour lines. And uh, hence the, the roads and all the uh, networking you see, all flowing along the contours at the various level. So this helped us to generate a design later on and apply the actual uh, design element also there. So it became very quick uh, turnaround for us for the uh, master planning. And not only at the broad level, even at the uh, um, uh, building level, at the cluster level, we could uh, uh, design the spaces between the blocks, you know, how to connect various buildings and what type of element to be introduced uh, in between and uh, what type of uh, character we want to bring in the scale of these spaces. All those things could be like, uh, uh, can be brought in the sketch level and with the today's uh, uh, scanning ability we can, can quickly turn around and then make it as a uh, uh, scheme which could be uh, in a presentable format to the client. So uh, as you notice uh, we for the different project uh, we, we were able to come up with various designs uh, in sketch format and quickly transfer them using the software uh, convert them into uh, now vector files and then made them as a presentation files and then able to present to the client and not only the buildings even the landscaping part of it like uh, the features or the character of the uh, negative spaces between the buildings also could be uh, detailed out in um, uh, uh, as a sketch format using the existing drawings and then we can uh, develop that as a proper landscaping drawing at the later stages so this is applicable not only at the site planning level and even at the built form level, you know, we could uh, use the same technique when the building is under construction, uh, when, uh, when the view has been approved and it is being executed, you feel there's uh, something is not uh, appealing to you that the way it was in the view, then you, uh, you can quickly come back, take the photo of that existing and quickly sketch over it and then see for the, to study the right proportion. And this is one example of a building when the initial uh, facade treatment was like this. Then uh, the client uh, requested us to quickly come up with a design uh, so that a revised uh, elevation design so that uh, uh, they will have to approve. And uh, this meeting was happening in the afternoon and they gave us the time to evening to come back. So all we did is uh, we quickly uh, spread out the tracing sheet for the same building 
and uh, made some quick sketches like this and show to them and they like these sketches and then they given a go ahead and we also made a three dimensional view based on the other uh, angle of the same building and presented our ideas how we wanted uh, the uh, the play of um, architectural elements in terms of the fins and the puncture holes and the solid walls and the horizontal fins and uh, uh, so forth but since this is also a green building we have to consider the green aspects also and when we presented this uh, uh, sketch immediately they approved the uh, scheme then we came back and then made it as a, a three dimensional view and gave them and made a few corrections and then the building has been built finally like this and this is the actual building at site so th this we are trying to uh, show you like now how um, uh, the uh, sketching uh, at quick sketches and transferring them into vector uh, image uh, points help us to uh, communicate our ideas to the client in a very easy format uh this is also uh, we can do the similar aspect using models so what we did is we used the uh, thermocoles as a block models when we quickly change the model positions the block models and uh, uh, we gave various options uh, for the same uh, um, uh, building uh, so that they will be able to understand which building is uh, very appealing in terms of uh, uh, the, the form and the integration of the uh, other buildings around so no um, and uh, of course this in this exercise we club both 3d model and also the uh, two dimensional sketching as uh, uh, two different mediums to explain to them because at the broad level massing was helping them to understand the uh, overall volume of the building but the sketch format they gave them an idea of how the connectivity from various building was uh, done uh, between the buildings and this is one uh, such example of a building and uh, this was a very initial sketch and it was uh, done in uh, uh, less than a a5 sheet then uh, they liked this idea when we presented uh, we are planning to do one of the building like this and then they asked uh, we asked us to uh, do a design development of that building and show them so based on that sketch we used a sketch up to almost uh, uh, develop a building uh, uh, similar to that then we made a 3d model of that building and uh, rendered it Uh, then we presented to the client so they they have approved it and uh, final product is this and it's, it's almost uh, uh, and, uh, nice to see how a building had been uh, developed three dimensionally so not necessarily the, the building form has to develop only from a plan it could be volumetrically could be an inspiration and then from then either it could be from in to out or outside to inside so just to give you an example how this building was uh, uh designed from a three dimensional volume study to what is is there and uh, sometimes this is even applicable for traditional uh, buildings also because the traditional buildings uh, when the government mostly government uh, build, uh, expect government is expecting the buildings to be designed with uh, uh, some amount of traditional elements and uh, character uh, in the design itself so and uh, doing in uh, uh, software uh, uh, explaining to them going to take some time so we quickly made some sketches and then you could see the second sketch is uh, what uh, they kind of liked it and then we kind of transported um, to uh, 3d medium then uh, this is actually the uh, existing um, building right now where the assembly not takes place uh, this is also been uh, published later on and uh, a similar attempt were made for a building uh, for the same uh, government um, uh, they they have asked us to uh, come up with uh, 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 an idea which is a uh, free flowing so we came up with uh, um, uh, because it is very closer to the seashore we said uh, how water rises and falls like the waves as the idea they liked it and uh, we gave this as the building view and then liked it and uh, this was constructed Uh, exactly as per uh, the sketch and it is currently functioning right now this is uh, another a smaller sketch uh, uh, to show how a large scale public building can also the the design of that building can be uh, generated by a, a simple sketch so the idea behind is the moment a, a project has been introduced to us or a client is asking us to uh, awarding a design or asking us to participate in the competition 
uh, we quickly uh, uh, do some sketches, make a, uh, an impression on the paper, then uh, immediately transfer into uh, three-dimensional uh, forms and uh, show them. So that gives a very, very lesser uh, time frame from what you wanted to perceive or what you want to create and then what they see and the the uh, the gap of communication from what we have in mind and what they perceive is uh, phenomenally reduced because of that and uh, sometimes we make only one side and uh, of the uh, features and it can be mirrored and then you can see the complete form of not only at the larger scale projects even for a smaller scale projects um, you could uh, uh, apply this and uh, as you see that you know so much of similarity between the sketches and the views uh, it's mainly because uh, the uh, the view makers take uh, our sketches exactly as it is and uh, 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 proportionate it to the scale and then do it so uh, we don't go wrong in what we are uh, thinking in our minds also in terms of scale and proportion uh, in in the interiors this also could be applied in a much more uh, dynamic way and as you notice here, there is a basic uh, 3D model we have made um, for a pantry and then we made a sketch over it like we wanted to get a rugged look. So we made some quick process and other things over there. Then uh, the 3D model was generated with that sketch. Then again, we made few changes in this and then we made a three-dimensional view. So three, this is actually a three-dimensional view, uh, a virtual view where uh, it uh, shows about the pantry counter and also the uh, counter where people can um, you know, sit and um, have their cup of coffees and some discussion areas. And what you see here is actually the build. So you could see from the initial sketches to what is built right now, there is not much of a, a lagging in terms of our uh, ideas being lost or uh, now we made any compromise in terms of what we wanted to achieve. So. Uh, the sketches, uh, initial sketches comes as a, a very, very powerful tool and also a, a, a cross-checking uh, point uh, to see whether the final product has been achieved the way it was conceived early in the initial stages. So this is an, uh, a view for a similar uh, pantry uh, area. Then uh, this is the view made and uh, this is the actual uh, constructed uh, space. Uh, this is a fit out for a company. So this is sometimes uh, the sketches work, sometimes it doesn't. This is uh, the, some of the sketches which we made and we wanted to um, convert into a building. So we made all sorts of angles for this building. But once the building model is made and we weren't quite uh, happy about it uh, because uh, uh, it almost looked like an uh, uh, part iron box and that was a comment we gave, got from our office. So we kind of you know dropped it. So sometimes the sketches help you to drop off certain ideas also, so that at the initial stage uh, we might be very excited about it, but later on we'll tend to uh, you know, make a better decision due to the comments we receive even internally itself. And uh, this is applicable even for building elevations. So you can see the three drastic different elevation for the street facade, what we made for a building, and uh, drawing. Uh, exactly and explaining this to the drafting team and then drafting would have taken uh, much more longer but we quickly uh, made it a thing in a half a day and then when the client was presented there itself we could show them and they were able to finalize the design element there. and this is applicable even for the interior uh, uh, spaces if you have to give a character to a space we can quickly show them this is what in our mind and they will able to understand they'll give a green signal too go ahead for that. So that uh, brings uh, 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 to a um, determination of this uh, initial stages where we are uh, using sketches as a, uh, a tool to, uh, as a process for design and analysis. Um, the next part is uh, the using of software and the building performance analysis. Usually this stage comes uh, after the design has been frozen after all your uh, initial uh, sketches and other things. And uh, before we develop uh, constru uh, good for construction drawings. So at the design development stage, you know, if we have some kind of a building envelope ready, then uh, especially with the demand uh, for uh, going for green rating by the clients, uh, 
these kind of studies help us to uh, make a judgment whether we are in the right direction or whether we are proposing the right element or not. So uh, here we are going to take a case study of a building and uh, how we do the sun path analysis first, then we do a shading study for after studying the sun path analysis. Then after doing the shading study, we will also do the thermal and comfort study. Then we we'll make a decision based on the combinations of using the shade and without the shades and orientation and so forth. And uh, some amount of financial aspect also will come into the picture. Then we'll uh, finally decide the build. So the first uh, uh, objective uh, here will be to create a sustainable facade, make an energy efficiency building, and we need to enhance the daylighting inside the building ensure that views are there within the building towards the outside. And, uh, and lastly, we should have a good uh, visual comfort when we are inside the building. So uh, this mainly we should have a form evolved already and we should have some uh, kind of a surface treatment we're planning to do. And also the what kind of materials and the colors uh, we wanted to get into the uh, facade. You know, these kind of... Uh, studies uh, will be able to be determined at this uh, stage. So first, before we go into that uh, stage, we would have done this, which is collecting data, which we, we would have done it in the research stage itself. But more importantly, we should get a precise data for uh, uh, solar daylighting, um, so rainwater, uh, rainfall data, and also humidity and uh, um, any other uh, bioclimatic related uh, data which will be uh, useful for uh, building uh, model. So once we get the location and the weather data, we quickly uh, graph it out. We, we take the maximum temperature of the year and uh, so that, you know, we will apply that temperature. We know that that's the maximum cooling we require for that building during that particular time. So we will take that data and then we'll also uh, study the uh, rose drawing, uh, rose drawings of the wind um, in, of, uh, coming from all directions and studying the pattern by which uh, uh, direction it is coming more and at what force so that the facade element has to withstand the uh, wind pressure from that direction. So that also helps us to decide we don't have to go for a heavy duty, uh, heavy wind pressure uh, withstanding glass and all the four facades. This kind of data will help us to optimize uh, what type of uh, Fazard elements we can use around the buildings. So next is that we need to study about the dry bulb temperature and the radiation aspects. Um, and we bring this data, then we study the sun path diagram. And today we have enough tools. Once you have a model, we can uh, import the model into the tool. And uh, once you plug in the data of the latitude and the longitude of that particular location, it generates a sun path diagram um, it is. Uh, it has much become uh, very, very less cumbersome in terms of generating sun path uh, diagram at uh, various point of the time of the day and during various uh, day of the years. So uh, typically we do it for uh, four times, uh, basically on the solstices and summer and winter. And uh, during the day we do uh, four uh, peak times. You know, morning, afternoon, and uh, the evenings. So we, we, once we get a one whole year uh, sun path diagram, we, we start studying them as a model. So we see that uh, on May 22nd, 10 a.m., you know, how much shadow is falling uh, on the adjacent areas. Around 2 p.m. and after 2 p.m., there's absolutely no shadows there. So we, we have to consider that uh, the, the, the sunlight which is falling on these facades uh, is going to be very direct on the glass and hence the glass selected or the features which we're going to design has to be carefully designed such that we have to reduce the direct solar radiation into the building and yes, and also allow the visual continuity to outside of the building. So this, um, so we again, we studied with the different uh, uh, shading uh, devices. Um, so once we do this outcome, what we have found out is that uh, southeast and the southwest, especially uh, southeast in the morning and southwest in the noon, are very, very uh, critical uh, facades. So we, uh, they receive direct sunlight. So once we turn them as a critical facades, 
we deal them as a separate element and for the remaining facades we deal with a different way so we map them out those uh, critical facades um, as you notice that you know we can also um, uh, get a, a diffused radiation effect from uh, based on that uh, uh, study and as you notice very clearly the whatever study we got earlier it is uh, same here where in the southwest is uh, is exposed to direct uh, sunlight and uh, whereas the southeast is a uh, little minimal and uh, northeast and the um, um, northern directions has got a very less impact um, so we identify the critical surfaces and the most critical surfaces based on these two studies then we'll move on to uh, ensure that what type of feature we're going to introduce in those uh, areas so we we uh, we identify them and then we um, you know, give a value to those um, uh, facades and then we while doing energy calculations we ensure that that facade uh, is uh, um, varied in terms of the, the, the data so that um, the um, the result is uh, studied or compared for various type of glasses or uh, the features whatever we are planning to use so this shows um, the same thing wherein uh, the solar radiation factors still you can clearly see the southeast solar radiations this we are kind of cutting the entire building into one small floor plate so that you know we kind of uh, addressing this issue not as a whole but as a uh, um, as if you are inside the office building and in that particular floor so once we address that we can if eventually multiply that and add up the entire facade so the same uh, finding what we done earlier we found that the southeast surfaces are the most critical and the second critical will be the southwest and the third and the least surfaces being northeast and the northwest so once we uh, achieve this uh, data based on this uh, radiation study uh, from the uh, software we immediately go back and apply the uh, shading devices so we have to be very careful so whichever is the critical uh, surfaces we kind of injected using the more closer vertical shading devices it should be close enough such that it cuts the direct radiation but it should be wide enough so that people from inside will be able to see outside without much uh, 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 kind of a blocking the views so we have to make a call so we have to do lot of uh, permutation and combinations and uh, without this software or without this kind of uh, post design study it will be impossible to you know actually be at site and then uh, understand this uh, uh, phenomena and then come up with the design element because at the end of the day uh, client may not go into the detail of all these uh, technical parameters but what they want to see is how the building going to look like after all these things so we have to have balanced both the aesthetical part on one hand and also the technical on the other so this study will strongly support us whether or whatever we are doing is technically is in the right direction or not so now what we are doing right now is uh, the daylighting so we can see that the amount of daylighting coming through the glasses is falling on the floor which are direct uh, daylighting um this um uh, well, this area you know receives that solar exposure especially in the evenings uh, so we we also observed that even a small amount of uh, direct radiation people will feel very uncomfortable especially with today's context it's uh, since paperless uh, interiors and mostly it is all digital screens and uh, writing boards which technically uh, reflect uh, was um, behave as reflecting surfaces so we have to uh, ensure not even a, a small amount of direct light even in the mornings or in the evenings come inside because we have in some worst cases we have seen people sticking newspapers on the facade um, where it was uh, supposed to have been designed with some other purpose so this kind of study eliminates those kind of uh, um issues and uh, we can uh, do a study on both vertical shading and horizontal shading typically uh, vertical shading is very uh, 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 will be very helpful for 
most and the secondary critical surfaces so that's what we are trying to do over here and uh, in some cases we do both horizontal and vertical uh, shading devices especially on the south and uh, southwest areas so as you notice here we kind of using various uh, type of facade elements in on one side so that when we uh, make a study of it we we'll know which are the ones which is allowing direct sunlight and which are the ones which is not and as you clearly see that the difference on that facade is the when we have a clear glass without any uh, shading devices it, it is attracting so much light and moment we have a vertical uh, uh, louvers or vertical fins uh, placed very um, you know, wider apart and what is the impact and when it is closer what is the impact and when it is tilted what is the impact so we come up with various options for this and uh, based on this we derive the angle in which uh, the fin has to be rotated what we call is a pitch uh, and i mean what the one is the angle the second is a pitch which is the gap between the two fins so uh, we we also decided uh, we'll also decide the uh, uh, the gap between the fins what is the adequate uh, gap to be provided so that we don't have a solar direct radiation into the office uh once we do the study and we found out that the horizontal shading device for the northeast and northwest was working well and the combination of horizontal and vertical was working for the southeast and southwest and horizontal with the inclined vertical shading uh place at the pitch of 1100 meter facing west was the best option so this would not have been uh, very easy if you had not done this various options in the software and uh, we able to make analysis out of it and this is uh, we can also take not only doing for the shading devices we can also once the shading devices are designed then we can also study how much of daylight has been being penetrated inside the building because uh, the, all the glasses are all not 100% transparent and especially in current scenario with the low fee, uh, low e glasses are existing in the market which cuts down the heat phenomenally at the same time they also have something called vlt so visual light transmission and it cut down the actual direct light coming into the building so which means what happens is when we are inside if the vlt coefficient is more we will not be able to see much uh, the outside also it is more like uh, uh, almost we are talking about the transparency is here so we should not have more transparency at the same time we should have transparency so it is the balance between these two Uh, uh the parameters which will help us to design the glass so each company has got uh, various parameters and various uh, combinations and specifications so we have to use the same data to generate this model to see how much of daylight has uh, can be penetrated so because of these studies uh, nowadays uh, the uh, little bit of a standard uh, phenomena is, is that the all the core areas of the buildings are all located in the middle of the building so that it doesn't need the daylight penetration penetration so much or the building has to be very thin if we have to have the daylight penetration from either side of the offices so we do this study and we do with the various uh, 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 percentage of sub vlt as you see there yeah, we use 25% then we use 30 to 31% and uh, we see uh, the The, the blue factor shows it's little darker over there and the uh, uh, brighter is towards the end so and the moment we increase it we can increase the uh, uh, daylighting uh, increase the vlt we can increase the daylighting penetration into the offices so we also studied the uh, lux level so the, the way in which we uh, study the daylighting is we fix Uh, 110 lux as the minimum level so once we reach receive the 110 that area is uh, considered as the area where you can actually daylight is been penetrating if the lux level at that particular point goes below 110 then that area will not be considered as a daylight receiving area so we have to do a calculation based on this and uh, for green certification they expect our building to have percentages of the office spaces or the building spaces should have a uh, daylight penetration and more the merrier and we get more uh, better points also for 
the green certification. So you can also study these at the uh, various time. Of course, uh, 1100 will be at very, very less areas. Uh, that also we can uh, study this at uh, various days uh, for that type of glass what we are going to use. So once we use all those, once we decide on the glass and the shading devices and the uh, critical facades, then it comes to a question of uh, comparison for uh, the facade options. So we kind of uh, decide on the vision panel, we decide on the spandrel panel, and we also decide on the daylight panel. Daylight panel is a panel which uh, is above the lintel level but below the beam level. So there is a portion in which uh, normally uh, what we call uh, just the uh, under the fall ceiling areas. Um, so this area we can actually allow the light to come in because it is not affecting direct penetration. So the type of glass which can be used in this location could be different way which will allow more light into the office. And that is also another uh, strategy to bring more uh, daylighting into the office. So then we also tie, uh, decide on the shading uh, device, the horizontals, the verticals, and we also decide, decide on the pore cladding. Once we decide all these uh, elements, we start plugging them based on our study on the type of facades where we want to have louvers and where we want to have uh, horizontal fins or the combinations. So we apply them, apply them on the each uh, facades. Uh, on surface one, what we need to have and on surface two one. And uh, this is the section which uh, talks about uh, the uh, vision panel, spandrel panel and the daylight panel. Uh, the vision panel is the portion above the sill, below the lintel, where average human being height, whenever they are standing in the office, they'll be seeing outside. So that glass has to be very, very critical. And the spandrel panel is the panel glass, which uh, is uh, pasted above the opaque the civil surface, which could be the wall or a beam or something like that, uh, any civil structure. So we don't have to go for a very uh, highly technical uh, double glazing there. We can go for uh, lesser specification glass. This uh, not only um, helps us, uh, uh, you know, financially. It also optimizes uh, during construction also. And there's a third element which is called the daylight panel. As I mentioned, you can see that it is uh, it is uh, put above the uh, lintel and below the uh, civil beam. And uh, this can have a different uh, specification than the vision panel because nobody is going to be able to want to see through that glass, it's only bringing the light. So that VLT or the visual light transmission for that glass would be different. And uh, this is the close up of that, uh, showing uh, what is the, um, the projection uh, we need for the uh, fins and also for the uh, horizontal uh, louvers. So once we uh, make a decision, then we make a GFC drawing um, then you know we give it to the uh, uh, contractor and uh, they come out with the shop drawings and uh, we comment on the shop drawings and then we ensure that the design intent is captured in the shop drawing. Then once uh, this all the fixing detail and uh, shop drawings are done, then we will do a cooling load calculation because that's when our uh, HVAC uh, engineer will come in and says, hey guys, have you finished all your uh, facade? Now, now I'll be able to do the cooling uh, calculations because any changes or any amount of variations in those uh, uh, glasses or the uh, shading devices or the direction of the uh, shading devices, it will have an impact on the cooling load. So once all is frozen, we will do cooling load, we compare it with the, uh, uh, with the base, base study and we see where uh, how much uh, energy is spent uh, for to cooling that uh, particular spaces. And then uh, we compare it with the ASHRAE standards. Then we compare it with the ECBC standards. And uh, we also um, give it to, um, you know, based on the green certifying agency, uh, we'll be see where, how much we are able to achieve from the based uh, case studies. And then we'll be able to get points accordingly. So after uh, so much of uh, detailed analysis using software, and uh, also making the uh, energy study for the cooling mechanisms. Uh, we'll be able to finalize uh, what is the 
building we are going to we are planning to have for that building so just to give an idea how the rectangle block kind of became like a combination of, of juxtaposition of rectangle blocks then how the louvers came to the picture and how horizontal uh, fins and shading devices and how the glasses and even the color of the glasses then we study all the facades then we make a three dimensional rendering of that so that we finally reach a point where we feel like you know this is the uh, finalized design then may we make this illustration and then we present to the client then one client approves then we give them the both the daylight and the night time uh, shots to them so that this is what they finally approve and if they make any changes now you can imagine we have to go back and then redo this uh, right from the beginning so that gives an, uh, an exhaustive uh, process we go through for the analysis after the post design and before the construction uh, stage so what's more important today is uh, it's a combination of all i believe that you uh, know it's uh, not only the design skills and knowledge about the building and construction or the detailing and everything but uh, it is finally it is also the software packages and the computer knowledge what we have today and uh, we should be in a position to use confidently so that you know uh, we'll be able to give a best product and then i would like to uh, conclude with the saying uh, by another architect uh, that love what you do and do what you love and learn the art of constantly enjoying every minute of your life so whether it is the pre stage or post stage or analysis or anything as uh, uh, being a part of the fraternity of this uh, building industry we have to uh, ensure that you no know, we enjoy every minute because we are the creators of this uh, beautiful world thank you Thank you, Architect Jyoti Ram sir, for your presentation. Now we shall take a short break for our sponsor video. Epco fittings that help you live smart.